Buildings covered in lush green overgrowth and buried in the sand. Entire cities plucked straight from Europe and dropped in the middle of nowhere. A seriously spooky island that is completely off limits in an abandoned basement filled with exotic fish. Let's talk about some of the craziest places that look like they belong in another dimension. The beautiful Villa de Mulini or Valley of the Mills as it's called in English was once a profitable milling town in Italy back in the early 1900s named after the flour mills that used to operate in the area. The now abandoned town is located not far from the Amalfi Coast in Positano in Italy and I must say it's absolutely stunning. Along with flour mills, the Valley of the Mills boasted a swan mill and a handful of other factories, but in the early 1940s nearby pasta mills took over flour production and the city became largely uninhabited. From there, nature took its course, branching out and covering many of the man-made surfaces in the area. Today, Valle de Molini sits completely abandoned, but that might not be the case for long. In 2019, the Italian government signed off on reconstructing the town, which would require removing the greenery from abandoned buildings, reinforcing and refurbishing said buildings, and building new ones. The World of Wildlife Fund was not happy with this decision and actually filed a lawsuit against the restoration company, stating that the environmental impact of the project greatly threatens wildlife in the area and highly increases the risk of landslides. As of right now, it's unclear if the restoration project will continue, but personally, I hope not, because I think this place is absolutely breathtaking just the way it is. As a general rule of thumb, when you want to visit Paris, you go to France. Unless, of course, you were hoping to see a completely abandoned and eerily creepy version of the City of Light, in which case you would head over to Taindu Chang in China, aka China's very own Paris. The town was built in 2007, just a few hours away from Shanghai, and it boasts its very own Eiffel Tower, which stands 300 feet tall, just over one third of the height of the original. The town was originally built to be home to 10,000 people, but due to its remote location, only a fraction of that number are currently living there and it's essentially a ghost town. The majority of traffic through the town comes from newlyweds looking for a place to take wedding photos and tourists eager to get a peek at what could possibly be one of the strangest replica towns to date. Hashima Island, also known as Battleship Island in Japan, is truly fascinating. Partly because it looks like a glitch in the matrix dropped it here from another dimension, partly because of its history, and partly because it's believed to be extremely haunted. Hashima Island was discovered in the 1800s, about 9 miles off the coast of Nagasaki, and in 1887, it was converted by the Japanese government into a coal mining facility. Soon, the small island became home to more than 5,000 individuals. As you can imagine, it was extremely overcrowded. For a while, business was booming, but then the demand for coal significantly decreased as the popularity of petroleum grew. The mine was shut down in 1974, which is also when the inhabitants of Hashima decided to either move back to Nagasaki or settle down somewhere new. After that, the island was declared a ghost town, a fitting distinction seeing as many people believe that Japanese prisoners had been forced to work and die on the island after World War II. Not only that, but it's believed that the prisoners haunt the island to this day. While this next one is not an entire island, or even a city for that matter, the New World Shopping Mall located in Bangkok, Thailand is definitely worth mentioning because it truly is one of the most fascinating abandoned buildings in the whole entire world. The mall was developed in the early 80s, but lasted for only 50 years before shutting down completely for a variety of foreseen and unforeseen reasons. You see, when the mall was being built, developers failed to acquire permits, or pay attention to building code for that matter. And so the mall was actually built seven stories stories higher than was permitted. Because of this, floors 5 to 11 were dismantled and the mall was left roofless. This led to heavy rains completely flooding the bottom floor, which in turn led to the mall becoming overrun by mosquitoes and gnats. The solution to turn that bottom floor into a pond for exotic fish who would help with pest control. The plan worked, but perhaps a bit too well, as fish bred at such a rapid rate that soon the accidental man-made pond was completely overrun. The the mall shut down in 1994 after a fire broke out in the building and debris from the roof killed one of the mall's patrons. Today the building sits in a completely dilapidated state off limits to the general public. For a while the pond remained until 2015 when it was completely empty due to safety concerns. However, some pockets of water and even some fish remain there to this day. I have to say I'm a sucker for a town turned green, so of course I had to mention Hao Tawan China, a once thriving fishing village now completely 
completely cloaked in clinging ivy. Located just 100 kilometers, 62 miles from the bustling streets of Shanghai, Haotuan was once home to 3,000 people, mainly fishermen and their families. Prior to the 1990s, it was a bountiful town, but as the turn of the century came near, the seafood supply became insufficient and the town's residents moved back to the mainland. In just 10 years, Haotuan was completely covered in a thick layer of lush vegetation that continues to consume the man made structures in the area to this day. The island is open to tourists though. In fact, many of the island's former residents now make a living off showing tourists around the island, but many areas are off limits due to their dilapidated and unstable states. But as long as you stay on the path and listen to your guide, I'm sure you'll be just fine. Next up, we have Centralia, Pennsylvania, because what's more other dimensionally than a town that is perpetually on fire 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year? Centralia was once a small, peaceful town home to about 2,800 residents, but everything changed in the 1960s when combustion in an underground coal mine caused a fire to break out and spread through the town's underground cave systems. While this might sound like a great reason to immediately pack your bags and head out, I mean, the town was quite literally burning from the inside out, the residents of Centralia were, for the most part, unfazed. It wasn't until 1979 when a local gas station owner noticed that his underground gas tanks had begun to reach alarmingly high temperatures that the townspeople even began to consider abandoning the town. And it still wasn't until 1982 that they actually started to leave after a sinkhole opened up and began spitting out lethal amounts of carbon monoxide gas. Still, believe it or not, five residents remain living in Centralia, the town of toxic gas and fire, to this very day. Couldn't be me. While I am well aware that I did imply that it doesn't get more other dimensionally than a town on literal fire, I believe I was wrong. Because I think an island where the soil is made up of 50% of human ash is just a little bit more out of this world than an everlasting coal mine fire. Or maybe not, but we're gonna include Puveglia Island anyways because in my opinion, it is truly something else. The island of Poveglia, located between Venice and Lido in Italy, is not only abandoned, but strictly off limits by order of the Italian government. Why? Well, honest to God, because it's believed to be extremely haunted. That's the actual reason. You see, back in 1776, the island was used as a quarantine station for those suffering from the plague. More than 160,000 infected individuals lived and died on Puveglia, many of which were cremated after death, which is what can contributed to the high percentage of human remains in the soil. But it doesn't end there, because in the late 1800s, the island was used as a mental hospital where it is believed that the head doctor routinely tormented his patients. When the hospital eventually shut down, reports of ghost sightings and hearing screams became so frequent that in 1968, the Italian government decided to make the entire island completely off limits. Today, the island, as beautiful and as haunted as ever, sits completely abandoned, home to nothing more than wildlife, lush greenery, dilapidated buildings, and apparently a whole bunch of ghosts. Okay, while this next one isn't actually abandoned anymore, it was for a good almost 2,000 years, and it still does kind of feel like stepping into an entirely different dimension, not to mention the history is incredibly fascinating. So let's talk about Pompeii, how it came to be abandoned, and what life looks like in the city today. Pompeii, located in southern Italy's Campania region, was once home to between 10 and 20,000 inhabitants who enjoyed eating, drinking, fighting, hunting, and ritual practice. But all that changed when in 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius, a massive volcano considered active to this day, erupted and wiped out the entire city of Pompeii in the span of just two days. More than 2,000 casualties occurred as a result, with many bodies becoming frozen in time as the lava encased and then solidified around them. After the tragic event, Pompeii was abandoned, likely out of fear and devastation, for more than 2,000 years. It wasn't until the 16th century when the the city was rediscovered by Domenico Fontana that reconstruction of the area began. Today, the city of Pompeii is home to approximately 25,000 individuals, and for the most part, the economy is supported by tourists eager to gaze upon the faces of these stone figures and learn more about the eruption of Mount Vesuvius and the destruction of the city. In the early 20th century, 12% of the world's diamonds were being produced by the small town of Kolmanskop in Namibia. In 1912, Germany took over Namibia and filled the town with impressive European agriculture, including a state-of-the-art music hall and an incredibly classy pub 
relatively speaking of course as the words classy and pub are somewhat juxtaposed. Anyways, for a while production was solid and business was booming, but eventually the town was abandoned for bigger and better things. You see, sometime around the 1950s, richer diamond sources were found further south, and so many of the miners working in Kolmanskop moved on to bigger, better, and shinier things. By the 1960s, the town was completely abandoned. Without anyone to maintain the area, sandstorms quickly took over, and soon the entire city became one with the dunes. Ross Island in India looks like it comes from a dimension where trees grow into the shape of shelters, and there is no need for mortar or brick. Of course, that is not the case because Ross Island exists in our dimension where trees don't form houses, but apparently they do engulf them in a way that is beautiful, eerie, and incredibly fascinating. Ross Island is one of over 500 small islands that make up the Nicobar and Adaman Islands. In the 1850s, it was used as a convict settlement by British authorities to house a significant number of captured members of the Indian. Indian rebellion. In 1941, an earthquake devastated the island and Japan swooped in and took it over, using Ross Island as a safe haven during the Second World War. When the war ended, ownership of the island was returned to India. Today it sits mostly abandoned, however tourists are welcome to the island, which is just a quick boat ride away from the mainland, and the beaches are stunning, so if you're in the area, I'd highly recommend you checking it out. And if you've been to any of these places, feel free to share your experiences down below, and I'll be sure to take a look. I've been your host, Santa Thompson and I will see you next time. Cheers.